Hello everyone, happy Monday, dreary Monday here, quite rainy and gross, which is why my hair is a hot mess. Okay, so yesterday, shame on me for not doing live video yesterday, but I just wasn't feeling up to it, um, and just had a lot going on. So I'm doing this today, because it is something that does need to be honored. We do need to realize that the American with Disabilities Act celebrated 30 years yesterday. It was an act that was um, happened in 1990, and basically what it means is it takes, um, it serves as civil rights for people with disabilities. Um, one big one in employment, when you're trying to, you know, when you're a person that's disabled and you're trying to get a job, you may um, discover, you may have already discovered, that sometimes businesses don't want to accommodate you. This act basically states that they have to accommodate you um, within reason. And also, it is to um, also to make sure that we have, we're able to publicly access businesses. Um, if we are unable to access a business, we are actually supposed to be able to access whatever that business does. We should be able to do it somewhere in our community. Um, it is a pretty big deal, but with this all being said, this is, like I said, we've celebrated 30 years yesterday, we still have a lot to work on. We still need um, many voices out there to speak for us, to speak on others' behalves that maybe they can't have, maybe they don't have a voice, you know, they can't have a voice. Um, they still deserve those rights. This American with Disabilities Act also, um, I think this is important to me anyways it is, also states that, at least in my area, because um, look, I looked up Indiana codes, um, but in my area, they have to, if a person is deaf and is unable to do things over the phone, um, the person that's on the other end has to find a different way to service this person that is deaf. Um, whether it's another device or meeting them in person or um, even email, you know, via email, if they're able to do that instead, whatever it is, they cannot just deny them service simply because they're deaf and they can't speak to them on the phone. Um, I also found it quite interesting. I was part of a, um, American with Disabilities Act celebration where we were able to speak to a disability lawyer. The MDA put this on. Um, this was last week. And one of the things that she said that surprised me was if you're told you can't come into a business, um, because you're not wearing a mask because of your disability, um, they cannot refuse to service you. They have to service you. So what you should do in that case is let them know, here's my money, here's what I need. Um, they cannot refuse to serve you. If they do, you have a lawsuit on your hands and you can, you can do something about it. And the more that people, um, I've seen this a lot, and I've even been guilty of it myself, where I've went to a restaurant and there wasn't a curb, a ramp for me to walk up. Um, and I struggled to get up on the curb. And could I have done something? Could I have wrote this business and said something? I could have. And this hasn't happened recently, by the way. Not since I've gotten the voice that I have now. Um, but back when I first started all this, my voice wasn't that, you know, that strong. And so I would just, and plus I'm just a cool natured person. I don't like to, I don't like confrontation. So I would just, you know, I just basically pushed it off. Um, I had my boyfriend there or my uh, my son there, you know, I had somebody there to help me. I would just get up on the curb and we'd go into the business, no problem. However, um, I'm going to be completely honest too. The American with Disabilities Act, I'm sure I learned about it in school. But when I started seeing it pop up this month, I had to go refresh my memory on it and remember what it was all about. And um, the biggest thing that I found out, like I said, was that you can actually do something to a business, you know, you can, they cannot refuse service to you. I found that amazing. Um, something else that I realized too, with living in an apartment, um, if your landlord will not accommodate you, this American Disabilities Act also protects you as far as that goes. Reasonable accommodations for you so that you are able to still receive housing. Now, with that said, maybe there's an apartment complex in your town that already services disabled people, um, I'm not, I have to get that question answered. I'm not sure if the place you're trying to get is able to refer you to that complex and tell you, hey, you can go get service there. 
um, because like I said, it has a red in the codes. If you're able to get it somewhere else in the community, you can be referred to somewhere else. Um, something else that we do that I found that was interesting on this meeting with the MDA, with the lawyer, was that even after 30 years, they still have 15,000 to 17,000 complaints about the ADA not being complied. So that tells you right there how much work we still have to do with people with disabilities and being able to be treated fairly. Um, I've run into this dilemma a lot, and this is another one I want to touch on as well. They, When you pull up to a business and um, there's a maybe a box truck there or a semi-truck that is unloading stuff, and it is actually blocking you from getting up the handicap ramp to go into the business. Um, you want to make sure you call the police and report that. I mean, yeah, if you want to post it on Facebook and put it out there, call the police first, but then go ahead and post it and you know put it out there because it is good to get it out on social media. However, don't just put it on social media and not call the police because you got to give them that opportunity to do their job. Um, if you're, but if you're being blocked, then and that business will actually, if they are blocking it, like I just said, um, this lawyer that I that we were discussed with the or that we talked to with the MDA meeting says that if it falls under a business that it falls this that act if they are blocking the parking at a big box store, it falls under a business not having accessibility. So it could actually be a federal offense instead of just um, a violation. You know so. Just something to think about. Um, keep in mind, like I said, that if we don't voice that we're not being treated correctly, we're not being treated fairly, um, who else is going to do it? We've got to do it. We've got to keep speaking up for ourselves. Um, if you walk into, maybe you go to a place, like a lot of times I've pulled up to a handicapped spot. It's There's only two handicapped spots available at the business, and one of them happens to be doesn't have any handicap plates or any handicap sign of any kind, so you know they're not, it's not a handicap, you know, they've not been by the, at least established handicapped by the BMV. Um, there again, I have been guilty of just driving, um, maybe circling the parking lot until they leave so I can take the spot, or just going somewhere else. Um, from now on, I will not be doing that, and neither should you. What you should be doing is you should be calling your, thor your authorities. You have to keep the local police and the um, your local min min municipalities, I can't say that word, you have to get them all involved. You have to let them know what's going on. You also, if you're unable to, maybe you go to a park and you're unable to access the sidewalk, give your city a chance to make it accessible. You know, talk to them, tell them, hey, I need this for myself so I can go enjoy the park with my children, or, you know, whatever the case is, Give them a chance. Make sure that you're involved with your city. Um, get yourself involved with your city if you have a problem like this that you want to be addressed and you want fixed. Definitely get yourself involved. Um, make our make, If we make our faces known and we show them that we are people just like they are, um, they're more prone to listen to us. At least that's what I've discovered myself. Um, so I definitely, definitely request that. Now, at the end of this video, I have to make one last final announcement, which I made yesterday. Um, I was reading an article yesterday where a follower of mine and somebody I follow frequently as well, I love her to pieces, um, posted this. And apparently an actor, um, an actor that was Octavia something, I don't remember her name, but I do remember seeing George Clooney was in on this as well. They have petitioned, they have opened or wrote an open letter and they are going to petition to Hollywood that, um, for inclusion, that there are not enough disabled people on the screen, on in movies or in shows or anything, and they are basically proposing that we have more disabled people on TV. So in order to participate in this and be a voice for this as well, I will post the link in my comments and also if you scroll through my page a little bit, you'll be able to find that article where it says something about Octavia um, proposes inclusion, something along those lines. And go ahead and read that article if you want more information. But if you want to join in, you want to sign this letter, you're able to. Just go to the link that I'm going to post in the comments and jot down your name. And um, if you're 
basically you're signing this if you support um, if you support networks auditioning and casting more actors with disabilities and if you want to see more actors with disabilities on screen you want to sign this letter and I honestly think that if you're a follower of my page you should be signing this letter just for the simple fact that you know how much of a struggle this is to not always be accepted by the society um, to not always be accepted by a huge crowd got kiddos running in from the rainstorm um, it, you know what it's like to be uh, discriminated against so with that being said be a voice stand up for yourself stand up for your brother stand up for your sister stand up for me um, because I really feel like if you've watched the Crip Camp movie on Netflix, if you have not watched that yet, I highly recommend you watch it because it is amazing as far as explaining how American with Disabilities Act got started, um, how long it took, and the fact that it's really shameful and disgusting, but the fact that um, we were actually, a lot of us were institutionalized, people with disabilities, and simply because the able bodies didn't know what to do with us, so that's what they did. And we weren't treated fairly there either, and we weren't treated, um, we were just treated less than human. Like this movie, as far as that part goes, I lost a lot of tears. Um, I was I was pretty bad, pretty upset a couple times in that movie because I just was imagining if it was like that today, oh my gosh, I'm glad it's not like that. That's why we took a break yesterday and celebrated that we are 30 years into this act. However, as I've said, we have plenty of work to do still. Um, still have businesses that don't comply, and they need to be shown that that's not okay. And this is not okay. We are people with disabilities, but we are people. We deserve to have the same rights as everyone else as an American. So, again, I will post this link for the open letter to Hollywood in my video. And I will see you all later. I will be writing what I've just talked about. I will be having a blog posted later on tonight. I'm currently still working on it. I've been working on it since yesterday. Mother of three kids, so really trying here, guys, to get it posted. Um, it will be posted tonight for sure. But it's just, it's definitely an obstacle with the kids at home and, um, yeah, all of that, all the craziness. So I will post the link, and until then, I'll see you next time. Everybody take care. And if you're getting a storm where you're at, stay protected. See y'all later.